Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. We keep pushing and campaigning for the issues that concern us all. No surprises there. However, it may surprise you to know that I believe God is a black woman. Do I have attention now? Keep watching to find out more. Liberals who are sticking to cataloging our misdemeanors is tackling the crime of nepotism. And again, it might surprise you to know that you and I are on this list. That's right. He says we are all guilty. Sandra, on the other hand, highlights a matter close to all our hearts. She spotlights another casualty of medical negligence. One too many, is what I'll say. Ekene jumps on the Keke and Okada restriction bandwagon. She may be taking the road less traveled, though, as she acts seemingly innocently. Are they a necessary evil? Chuka is said to have the last word on the Keke exit, as he terms it. I actually can't wait to hear what his take will be. But wait, we must, as I'll be making the first move after the break. Realizing a new vision or reality takes being prepared to go beyond the familiar, beyond religion. I would say God cannot save us. We must save ourselves. With God on everyone's lips these days, you will think we're living in paradise. For every time, for everything, something goes wrong, we blame God. Or we'll go to her, pleading for some kind of intervention. But what God's work is done, she created us, and she's given us the power and the responsibility to make our lives better. She's not going to come down from heaven to save us, unless we save ourselves first. I know, yes, as I did say, I believe that God is a woman, a big, black, beautiful woman for that matter. So, beyond religion and our reliance on the magic of the divine for even the most basic things we can do with our hands and our heart, we sublet our responsibilities to God. As I did say, the Almighty's work is done. She is not coming back to save us. Well, that's what I believe. Or build roads or institutions for that matter. Part of the problem of governance, at least in this time, is that the average Nigerian is distant from governance and institutions. And that creates this distance, especially from our elected officials. We see them as nuisances we permit or engage only when necessary, when we need some form of government-approved document. Beyond that, we just ignore all that's going on, which, of course, our elected officials love very much, and it frees them to do whatever. Yes, the occasional fiasco or controversy blows up, but the toolkits to suppress them, such as such, such for those embarrassing episodes, is always available. Given time, with enough money to share, it will blow over. Elections come, and because of the same distance, we, the citizens, engage the politicians purely for our own instant benefits. What can I get once the elections are here? Once we get it, we essentially abandon or abdicate our responsibilities. Or at best, transfer those responsibilities to the social activists. Which is why social activism has now become some sort of a business. Since some of the activists now recognize this pattern and clearly see that it is rewarding. Citizens, we, all of us, have to accept some measure of responsibilities for the failures that are all around us. We never seek solutions, just immediate options to get us around our immediate problem. So we're constantly seeking for options rather than solutions. No matter how good these options are, they are not solutions. At least they are not long-term solutions. We need to engage at an organic level, from our neighborhoods to our communities, to our cities, to our states, to the federal level. Ask questions. Demand answers. For instance, God forbid if my house catches fire. Where is the fire service? How quick will be the response time? Do I know that? Can we go see the fire truck? Where is the fire service? Can we ask questions about their funding, about their training? 
Because even if you're rich, no matter how rich you are, you live in Banana Island or some expensive part of Lagos or Nigeria, I don't know how many people will pack a fire truck in, in their compound or have trained firemen in their employ. Yes, we need government and a responsible government. And even though the road to Banana Island, even that road is full of potholes, and it floods every time the angels take a piss. If you have an emergency, health, fire, robbery, whatever, your help will probably not come in time because all the basic infrastructure that supports that help getting to you will be delayed because of our distance from government. Engagement means not just participating in elections. That is great. But that is often the end result. If citizens do not engage as to what, who, when, and how the institutions that underpin democracy are meant to function, then forget the elections. That is mere formality. That is, the results have already been decided. They have shaved your head in your absence and left you again with a huge bill. For some of them includes even travel to Dubai and pedicure and manicure. Engagement includes deciding on the processes, justifications for government decisions and policies. The process is more important. Engagement means speaking up individually and not subletting our voices to activists. Engagement means coming out to demonstrate and protest. Engagement means demanding accounts of stewardship from elected officials, including asking how much was spent to host the so-called town hall meet meetings and so on. How much did the Lekki toll, toll bridge cost? How much does it make each day? And why should we pay 400? What's the justification for that? Engagement also means that when our fellow citizens, citizens are asking questions, we don't vilify them simply because of their ethnic origins. In fact, now it can be argued that Nigeria's largest opposition party is the social media, because I don't see what um, our so-called PDP opposition is doing. And so it's on Twitter, Facebook, that opposition voices are very much present. And no wonder some people in power, the political elite, are attempting to push for the restriction of that last remaining opposition stronghold. But we as citizens must never be afraid of our government. Indeed, in any country where citizens are afraid of their government, that country cannot be called a democracy. I've said it. I, yeah. I have? Yes, you have. <laughs> well, let me add extra then. Okay. Um, I, I like the bit about citizens' engagement. I choose to not get distracted by the she god. <laughs> You're clearly on a journey of discovery, so that's allowed. Well, um, yes. <laughs> you know. um, but um, yeah, I like the citizen engagement. The only thing I, I, I sort of think to myself is, someone here on The Advocate once said that the average person is too bogged down with the daily travails to actually, like for example, you say the, the toll gates. It's frustrating, but you know, where do you begin? Do you now stop, pack your car, start going to their office, even to get the so-called electronic ticket? Yeah. It takes time, time you don't have because you've been stuck in traffic en route to somewhere else, and then maybe you have to go and buy petrol for your generator. It's, it's quite a lot. So my, my sense of the way I feel, and I've always felt, is that those of us who are a little more privileged in terms of enlightenment and education, and maybe even time or access to some of these things, should create the bridges for people to make, bring them closer to governance. So we Very need to well set said. up you know, systems that allow people to just hop on. Yeah. So for example, if you know people are being oppressed in an area, set up maybe some sort of a petition list, something that makes it easy for people to just key in and you know, add their voice to your voice and mobilize themselves. That's the only way we're going to get group action. So I threw that in. Yes, so the problem I think is because of the way this so-called you know, richer people who could have you know, driven this process, how they made their money might be the ma major problem. To patronage to, as well. To, to, to come out like that. Uh, although there's still, okay. a few, there, there's still quite a few who could do it. And um, so I, I like the fact that you're calling them out to Yes, I'm calling us. Because but, but, really, but, yes. Uh, yeah. so, sorry, you wanted to say something. No, no, I was going to say, I just like the fact that you're saying God really cannot help us. Okay. And that's the yeah. truth. Mm. You know, a lot of us, when um, situations happen, there's a fire incident, there's um, a health challenge or something, we're quick to call on God. Even we're him, to... he said, God yeah, forbid. Yeah, I, 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 I noticed that. <laughs> okay, that he God said. Forbid, if, my had, if my house catches fire, and I was going to point that out. Yeah. So why are you Instead of him to look after his house. Well, right? Do you understand? Yeah, because exactly. because so, it is a social do narrative do that, do that exists. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a but natural yeah. disaster that would happen <laughs> yeah, true, if anyway. it happens. And yeah. So that's why societies put these things in place. He, he said something <laughs> as expensive as Banana Island is. I don't think there's a fire service Dedicated. station here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, recently, the, some shops in Balogu Market, Market caught fire. Sure. It took eternity for the fire service to assess the place. And, and, and so you expect that there should be a standby 
fire service in places like that, apart from keeping. Meanwhile, road safety will arrest you for not having a um, what fire do you call it? A fire extinguisher in, in, in your, your car. car. How do you now arrest government, government. for not providing very these valid. basic things? Wow. And then the issue that Chuka raised is very also key. Some of these people also are bogged down with the issues that you raised by pursuing you know, the basic things to provide for their families than even if they now go out to fight for these things and they are victimized, nobody comes for them. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, well, it's, it's a short case. I think my, my advocacy has kind of stretched the boundaries, but here we go. So was it a case of putting a cat among the pigeon with my advocacy? Depends on how you look at it. Liberus, when we come back, looks a set. To put all of us in the dock with his advocacy after the break, uh, I hope I will plead not guilty, liberals, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> the problem with nepotistic appointment is that you cannot dismiss them for incompetence as they were never hired to perform in the first place. Nigeria, we are all guilty. It's so sad that we cry daily of incompetence in our ministries, departments, and agencies. Yet, we still employ people and even vote people into office based on religion, culture, and nepotistic connections. People who we can't employ into our private business as a result of incompetence are daily finding their way to public service and public offices as a result of who they know. Otherwise, how can one explain the fact that people who, are, who applied for jobs in MDAs or are screened at interviews are not the ones finally employed, but those who didn't pass through the process, but knows a governor somewhere, a minister, a senator, director, PAMSEC, or knows somebody that knows somebody. You can never imagine the frustration of going through an employment process only to be told, you hear from us. Not because you are not qualified or didn't do well in the process, but because some other persons who were not part of the process would be used to replace you because they know somebody up there. Ministries are selling job slots to highest bidder, Sexual gratification is requested from ladies in return for employment, yet nobody's fired or investigated, and we want to attract the best brains. I laugh. As it is in the public sector, so it is in most professions in Nigeria, including privileges in profession that is supposed to be noble, the legal profession. What's the essence of a good education if you cannot guarantee employment unless you are connected to someone? What's the point reading your books when all you need to be gainfully employed or become a public officer, is either to serve as the master stable, as a, um, a minister for labor in Gigi has described it, or your parents would have to beg their way through for you with a note, please, the bearer is from me, interview and employ, we cope. As a result, learning is de-emphasized in the place of paper qualification. Are we happy that some of our graduates can't even spell graduation? That's how low we have sunk, and the shame is on all of us. What's the point remaining in a country that doesn't guarantee hope, fairness, and equality, despite the abundance of natural resources? No wonder a young able bodied men and women would rather cross the desert to Europe for slave jobs or sell their bodies to the highest bidder at home or abroad. I know you say join politics if you want to change the narrative, yet you refuse to make it attractive to bright minds. According to Sonia Okosu, how long shall we be patient before we reach the promised land? Our governors or politicians or presidents face to perform, we vote them back into office. After all, they tar the road to our village as if they, it was their money. Because failure these days are benchmark for success. If Jonathan did it that way and failed, Buhari must do it that way. It doesn't matter whether we already know the end result as failure. Forgetting that a wrong precedent set today becomes a conventional practice of tomorrow. Our service chiefs are out of ideas on their job we insist they remain there because they are from the same community or region with us. We benefit from corruption and corrupt processes. We say it is connection. We must realize that the country is what we make of it. As our leaders and rulers are drawn from amongst us, and the little process we circumvent today becomes an impunity tomorrow if not addressed. I would therefore advocate that as Nigerians, we should remember that we are all the ones in opposition and not the political class. If you see a wrong and refuse to address it because our relations or religious or friends are involved, then we shouldn't blame others when they bite the same practice tomorrow, simply following in the precedence, precedence we overlooked. Yeah. yeah, I think that's true. I think, I think I was discussing this with someone recently where um, conventional practice becomes 
I don't know. Yes. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes a law. Did we say it's so, in law? Yeah, exactly. It, it was to, it was in law, whatever yeah. um, I circumstances. Think, I think we've established this over time that the fundamental issue we face as a country is as a result of the fact that the best brains are not in authority. So if we're going to start from the very head, talking about the presidency, going down, you know, to ministries and it's only per people who are well connected and who has, you know, the money who make it to those offices. And that's the reason why we continue to face the problems that we face today. Talking about offices, you know, most um, employers, I think the, let me say that the men are, are even at a disadvantage if you do not have money to buy your way through, you know, there are a lot of unemployed young men out there. Meanwhile, the ladies, for those of them who can, you know, go to dinners in short skirts in the evenings, you know, they get employed and this is no, becoming... I, I, I keep asking myself, why are we so short-sighted? Because I, I made a note of something he said. He said, you benefit from corruption and you say it's connection. Mm -hmm. That means we all, in a sense, are guilty, yeah. quote. I mean, I try to separate myself, but it makes no difference. If, if the majority are like that, then that's the tide, the way the tide is flowing. So you sort of say, why is it that people are look the other way, even when they see something that they wouldn't do, but they don't want you. So whenever I, I go to report, it, people, yeah, they, they don't want you reporting, they don't want you rocking the boat. They want to just say, hush, hush. Why is it? Is it that they feel, um, well, it's the norm. All of us do it. I don't know, what is it that makes people not want to flag up wrong practice? Because for me, it's instinctive. I can't tolerate an environment where people are doing things that I feel ultimately is affecting the whole. Because for me, it's like, if we're pulling in one direction, like we're here, we're working, and we're pulling one, and somebody's doing something in a way that is dropping the standard, I feel you're letting us down. So mm -hmm. I feel, I forget the sentiment, because I feel we put sentiment over substance too often. Mm -hmm. Just by an aside, very quickly, sorry, Lily Bruce. I was listening to Sibadjo the other day on one of these conferences, and the guy had details and things he could drop down. And I said to myself, this guy is presidential material. Mm -hmm. he's, look, he's making those points about finances without looking at his notes. <laughs> and yet, why are you laughing? He's what? the vice president, and he was talking as if he was advising a government. Yeah. So can I, okay. I, I, I was thinking that our president doesn't make Indian. those kind of points. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, this yeah. guy is doing it without notes. Quickly, That's the brain. I didn't want to talk mm -hmm. on this, but yeah. you raised this issue. That is the vice president, yeah. the number two person mm -hmm. That's the brain, who though. sits down with the president. Yeah. Yeah. So when they do anything right, they say the presidency is one. Mm -hmm. But here he is giving advice to who now? Yeah, because that, he is. That, that's the problem. Yeah. And, and so for on the issue of dropping the ball, if you complain and it is attended to swiftly, you encourage the next man to complain. Okay. When Fulanese were killing people, I expected Mr. President to say, look, this is not what we stand for. I'm a full animal, but this is not what yeah, we stand for. Kind of I'm going to dis want. deal decisively yeah, yeah. with really whoever reflected. is yeah. dropping the ball mm. in our name. Yeah. But when that didn't happen, it's it, 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 that's the, the convention that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Can, I, becomes... can I say that? I mean, um, I do agree with you. I mean, I was, I was just this morning, I was reading a tweet from a young friend of mine, David Hune, who tweeted the same thing about that he, he went through like a school reunion, a wedding brought about a like, mini school reunion um, and of all the private school he went to, uh, the class of 40, there were in total about four or six of them remaining in Nigeria. Every other person has, had gone out. So the best and the brightest who can find mm -hmm. solace in here are leaving. Sure. And so we, we have this, we're creating this system unknowingly um, where we're just left with a sea of mediocrity. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's Again, from, an, from physics and from economics, we're rewarding it each time. Yeah, that's so it's self about meritocracy. Yeah. So, so I, I, I mean, I've worked in government for many years, and I find that, um, you know, when way back in the 60s, when the former president of the U.S. said something about the best and the brightest, and in, in setting up NASA to go to the moon, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and there's no such vision, not even in one agency <laughs> within the system, yeah. within our system yeah. that you will say the best and the brightest are here and and, I know, and, 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 amazing, and that's sad I mean, what you're saying it's amazing how merit a merit uh, a merit meritocracy or a merit-based organization can inspire people like yeah. if, if you even take our telecoms I like the fact that there's competition. I feel it's healthy. So once you set up a system that lets people know that this is what you're rewarding football whatever sports yeah then you find that people will immediately key into it. So I think what we get, what we're getting, according to what he's saying, is a, is, is a function of what we are endorsing. For me, we are all, we endorse it, we agree with it, 
Once it favors you, it's connection. Yeah. If it doesn't mm -hmm. favor you, it's, it's corruption. Really. Yeah. So we need to change. Yes. And so well, a zero tolerance, a zero tolerance policy ensures we are all judged by the same rules. After the break, Sandra is tackling a matter that requires a raising of the bar above ground zero. Never mind applying zero tolerance anyway. So Sandra waits to hear from you. The victims of certain acts of negligence are often in no position to speak for themselves. Sometimes we are the only voice they have. I'll be talking about the Nigerian healthcare and asking a question, a problem of quacks or not. It's no news that there has been a massive exodus of healthcare professionals out of the country in recent times. Doctors and nurses are living in their droves on a regular basis in search for a greener pastures and with little or no attempt by the government to improve the state of things. The brain drain of the health sector would inevitably worsen. This does not bode well with any of the average Nigerian, as living here is gradually becoming an extreme sport. While the middle class and elites could afford to invest their wealth in medical tourism and get quality treatment abroad, the rest of us become endangered species. Such was the case of Alex, a 27-year-old student of the Federal University of Gombe, who walked with his two legs into a general hospital with the sole aim of visiting a dentist, but was wheeled out on the same day as a corpse. As stories flew across social media, there was the disclaimer by the Nigerian Del Dental Association that, uh, that the alleged specialist who administered a wrong injection was, wasn't a qualified dental surgeon, and all attempts to bring, the, to bring him to book have till date proven abortive. It was also told that the supposed surgeon was on leave the entire day. What would have seemed to be a harmless toothache escalated into a terrible disaster, and some folks, we call it fate. It is difficult not to notice the deaths that occur daily in the country from preventable causes. There was also the case of a doctor's refusal to treat a patient with severe knife injuries because of a lack of police reports, which of course led to her bleeding to death. In other instances, cases of wrong diagnosis, wrong prescription of drugs, inadequate medical equipment, and the list goes endless. An interaction with a doctor friend on these issues rather sees pertinent questions being raised, all pointing fingers to the Nigerian government, the Nigerian government again. He asked, how do we prevent a man-made catastrophe such as these when Nigerians annual budget per person is only $6, not for a day or a month, a whole year? Why won't there be incessant industrial actions and preventable mortalities? To put this in perspective, the annual threshold per person in the US is 10,000 US dollars, while our country can only boast of $6 for our citizens. How do we surmount our peculiar challenges as a developing country with so little resources allocated yearly? This only reveals where the priority of the government lies a country with an estimated population of 180 million has only one doctor per 6,000 citizens. How sad. So I'll say, someone definitely needs to take the blame. The question is, is it going to be the quacks and the unethical medical practitioners or the government and its policies who have failed to address the issues and concerns of healthcare professionals and you know, systems in the country? If any significant progress is to be made, all hands must be on deck to ensure that our health sector is given the parity it deserves and spare the untimely death of our loved ones and leave fate completely out of it. Ah, uh, um, you see, really this deep also, sigh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, seriously, because humans are involved. Yeah. Here, um, I had a debate with a colleague recently saying, and the way we highlight death in Nigeria, say people don't die in other countries. But we I said, well, enough. when people die in other countries, there are steps to ensure that there's no repeat of occurrence. Such, yeah. And then there are steps also to ensure that it is avoidable. But here, we allow people to die like chickens. And so that's the difference. 
and also it also connects to the topic raised by Emeka and I mm -hmm. that who is responsible the people wouldn't want to take responsibility during the break we are talking about people not perceiving yeah. their own acts as Corruption. you know contributing to this pool mm -hmm. and they would rather point accusing fingers at government your doctor friend says oh it is the government but he is a doctor forgetting that even if the moment you sign to work there whatever is given to work you manage it mm -hmm. if these people are brought to book now they are making excuses the man mm -hmm. was not on duty that day yeah. or the person is not registered he's yeah. not registered and it ends there the man will still come back the next day and work there mm -hmm. no sanctions so if there are no sanctions it will keep repeating itself mm -hmm. so at our own individual level at organizations chuka comes here and talk about architecture criticize give knocks to his people how many of us would do that? That's basically why. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, because um, when I was thinking about what you were saying, the Swiss cheese analogy came to mind. You know, so many holes on so many levels that you can't, because for this thing to happen, you would have had several systems mm -hmm. failing. So you would have had the policy that was there that's yeah. not being enforced. You'd have had the supervisory level of making sure who is on the ground is registered. Yeah. That has failed. You then have, you know, the doctor himself somehow managing to work within a hospital system that's not checking him. That too is a failure of systems. You know, so the, before you get to that point, there will be several systemic failures. So we must be able to hold someone on this. Because I saw the picture of that young man, vibrant looking young man with a future in front of him. I'm sure he never dreamt that a dental appointment will lead to the is, termination yeah. of his life. So I think there must be something we can do. The, person that, the, the people that jump up in my head are the NDA, the National Dental Association, because they need to be the police on our behalf. So I they need to give us... Of, but they're covering up. They yeah. need to go after him or we're going yeah. after them, you know, because yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's quite sad. Yeah, yeah, it's quite sad. But I, I, I don't know. You see, Nigeria's problem is quite uh, almost unique. How did we get from... A situation where we have, well, how did we get to a situation where we have no money and such a lot of people? So, you know, like, it's, it's, I was reading that our, Failure you know, to invest GDP, over time. Yeah, GDP no, compared it's to Thailand. Like that now. It's, it's compared like to that. Thailand. No. They, no, people that don't have money have more people. It's really, yes. you, know, it's you haven't a, invested it's, in the people so that they ridiculous. become productive. You don't expect good medical, you know what I mean? The, 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 yeah. the yeah. money is not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. And there are more people in Alimosho. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. poor area yeah. than you have yeah. in the yeah, that's, that's like good. That. But, but again, if you had over time planned for it and made investments in those people, those people would be more productive. You know, so you're essentially Thailand leaving has six times a better I, GDP I, I think, well, per capita than us. You know, six times. For, for me, that's shocking. Ultimately, wow. I, I will, I will, I will say that um, it is the responsibility of of government. Yeah. Because we are part of government. There are no doubt about it. We create government. Um, but I think that is a responsibility of government. Government has to rise to the responsibility of saying we will do this in the best interest of us. You know, so call it enlightened best interest. And that is what we require. And I think that's the kind of leadership that's required to make this kind of changes. Well, I keep speaking on behalf of the many unheard voices. However, this is where we get to hear your voice. On when in doubt, they will take all down. Baba Tunde or Debbie Yi says, dear all, I'm really fascinated by this program, very educative and eye-opening. However, I observe that on, on and off, all of the people just talk at the same time. At some other time, the panelists do not allow the other panelists to finish their thought before being interrupted by the other one. Please, we cannot all be talking all together at one time, in, like in a marketplace. Thank you for this, Obatunde. We'll certainly take this on board. On human trafficking in Nigeria, Nati Rebel says, no one force anyone into sexual exploitation, but they choose to be in it because it's paying off. Quite unfortunate, though. Thanks, Nati. However, you will find some are tricked into it, like the lady that just returned from Lebanon. On when in doubt again, they take her down. Kunta Kinte says, unfortunately, they don't need to reach the point of doubt before taking these subversive steps. Someone in the corridor might have hatched a plan on how money can be made in the area. So they had to come up with this lame excuse. Take it all down has always been the escape route of government. It is sad we have never had one that ever bothered to think things over before taking decisions that affected the people. I wouldn't mention thinking out of the box because that would be expecting, that would be expecting too much of government. This keg of gunpowder we are all sitting on, I fear gravely because I wonder how much longer. Thank you, Conta Kinte. Now, why does that name sound familiar? Yes, it sounds very familiar, Conta Kinte. The boy from Africa. <laughs> Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram 
at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up on the previous broadcast, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Kenneth takes on the issue of Kekena Pep and Okadas. One of us had to definitely. Yep, Libby, you got that right. This was a topic begging to be tackled, so I'll be rising to the challenge and asking, Kekena Pep and Okadas, a necessary evil? On February 1st, 2020, the Lagos state government rolled out its policy to restrict Kekes and Okadas away from major highways onto secondary or collector roads. And the impression was that this was a largely unpopular move. No one is impressed with the typically insensitive and disconnected way government marshals out disruptive change. However, putting sentiment aside, the issues are these. The restriction in question is already an existing law. In other words, it had passed through all the existing protocols of proposed bill, consultation with stakeholders, and debate in the House of Assembly before it was passed into law. Now it's law. Someone Lu was merely jump-starting its enforcement, and some people would say, it's high time too. Kekes and Okadas have become a lawless menace on the roads, with a record number of accidents resulting in admissions at hospitals. According to Boenga Motoshaw, Commissioner for Information and Strategy, from 2016 to 2019, there were over 10,000 accidents recorded at the general hospitals alone. This number excludes unreported cases and those recorded by other hospitals. The total number of deaths from reported cases is over 600 as of date. So whilst we argue on the necessities for Kekes and Okadas, let us weigh into the debate the fact that there are widows and some fatherless and even motherless children who will testify to the real cost of the Okadas and Keke hazard. The volume and growing influx of Akadas and the unskilled men that ride them, who flood the already, and women, the already um, flooded market, ensure that the policing of this menace is well nigh impossible. Since before the ban, there was an estimated 2 million cars, over 500,000 Akadas, and another possible 200,000 uh, Kekes to just 4,000 police officers. Kekes and Akadas cannot be the solution to the employment of our teeming, uneducated, and unskilled workforce. In addition to the loss of limb and life, there is the proven correlation between the presence of Okadas, Kekes, and increased crime, as the states that have enforced the ban of such vehicles have documented a 70% drop in crime rates. Conversely, whilst we continue to manage a poor substitute, and I mean poor, the real deal will never emerge, as the same government we look to to supply quality public transport will have the excuse, as always, that we're yet again subs subsidizing the absence of the same. Clearly, there is a need to get creative in solving our transport problems. A standard restriction could still allow for a renegotiation of the policy enforcement that would permit a select registered and regulated motorbike users, but not the free for all that exists now in the name of necessity. It's time to hold our government accountable, as, as we keep saying, both at the state and federal level for the investment and infrastructure that is due us Legotians and Nigerians deserve a more efficient and safe transport system that is truly reflective of the megacity and giant of Africa. Okadas and Kekes are not going to take us to the promised land. If there's such a thing as a necessary evil, then the retention of Kekes and Okadas would still short, fall short of that merit list. But nah, there ain't such a thing. Uh, uh, Kenya, well, please, I would plead with you. You won't say anything on this. No, I will, I'll hold my peace. Yeah. I'll try. Yeah. I, I can't promise time. anything. I'll try. Please, permit me. I'll try. Nobody ordinarily, no graduate Let ordinarily would team. want to ride Okada. Like we say, it is that opening created by the lack of, you know, opportunities or facilities mm -hmm. that will make people... Well, growing up, Okadas were not... Nobody... Mm -hmm. We didn't know Okada. Mm -hmm. We knew taxis. We knew mm -hmm. buses. Yeah public transport, and we we're okay. But after some time, Okada came up. I remember when they started, it was 50 Kobo, you know, in some cases, one Naira. But today, it has become what it is. Government, unfortunately, you said something. Government will not think outside the box. Yes, what led to this? How do we ensure that we curb this or we solve the problem so we don't have a recurring? You pass a law, and then you restrict. This is not the first time they are restricting. But during election, they mm -hmm. donated Okadas mm -hmm. and helmets to these same people because they used them for election. 
after the election, you come back with this. You're recycling. In London, I'm running out quickly. In London, you have trains. You have buses. You can determine. Trams. You have tram. You can determine your transport fare for a whole month. But here, government will ban before they begin to bring alternative. Okay. There are accidents on Okada. There are accidents on our cars. There are accidents on bad roads. So which one should we treat first? Yes. There need to be a holistic approach to it, and not just this knee-jerk yeah. approach that we like. And at the end of the day, you say, wait, the palliatives will come later, and mm. they never come. Mm. I think that, um, I mean, Liberos, you just kind of, um, you know, echoed what, what I was thinking. Um, I will say that it was, it was necessary to do something of the Okada, because they were becoming a menace. Yes, yes. Uh, it will amaze yeah. you that my wife says to me, I'm like, why do you have a katana? Katana is a Japanese sword. Why do you have it in your car? It says, de one, eh? yeah, it's a deterrent. Because to have one. I, don't, I don't. Yeah, because of the menace of because Okada. Because one day they almost, you know, assaulted me. Wow. And until I brought the thing out, then we had equal balance of terror. Yes. And I'm not. I'm clearly as mad as you. Yes, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> but it, they're a menace. But I thought there was a better way to handle the menace. You know, so it's graduated. Yeah. And that's the role of government. Impact analysis. Right. What will happen if we take this decision? Yeah. And what are the palliatives? Mm -hmm. You know, and can we sequence this? Manage this transition Can we do period. this here right. in Ikeja, test it? Mm -hmm. Can we move to Shomolu? Can we do this? So you test it. And to, to come up with such a broad plan that's clearly disruptive, I think that's the word. We yeah. saw what happened. We're seeing it, mm. the, the consequences of that. And, and even the public communication tools to manage it yes. were not well structured. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, I mean, do I want a city without Okada? Uh, yes. yes. I, I will, I will, I will go for that. Yes. I will go for better transport systems because they were clearly a security menace. I mean, we're looking at this, but the security aspect is actually um, fearsome. I don't know if you saw um, uh, Area Father Charlie Boy's comments on Facebook and, and Twitter this morning. Where so, he talked is that about, his name, Area Father? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Where he talked about speaking with some um, um, uh, gentleman who is his house who coordinates, who knows a little bit about saying that these people were fundamentalists, that somebody's yeah, paying you have a to, lot of them. Yeah, somebody's yes. paying them to, giving to them in. money to come into Lagos. Yeah. And Mountain they were like sloth. sleeper cells. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, it, it might sound... I have sound, a friend but, who said that one of his gate man was, um, the moment they confirmed him to be Boko Haram, you know, he, he just he ran, he, he he ran away. Yeah. But the, the solution to the problem is not a tried ban. Mm. Like you said, you ban them, you identify that these people Restricts. are Boko Haram. And so you have bound them or you restrict them. Mm. But there is a big question. They are Boko Haram. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? They will go somewhere else. Exactly. Where are they going to go? Mm. Yeah. So if we all ban Okada, you know, won't they move into? They're already here. They'll move into something else. Yeah, so how do you take a census restriction. of these people? Why don't you take a census of them, do a registration yeah, that would have before been you now? So you have the data. Led. You just say, oh, yeah, we know that these people are a menace and then mm -hmm. security threats, so we ban you. And yet you can't flush them out of the country. You can't ban insecurity. It's intelligent. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's intelligent. intelligent. We, we, you, can't, yeah. you can't proclaim, I ban insecurity, and yeah. then insecurity yeah. goes away. Yeah. Yeah. It's not done. But That's I must admit, challenge. the roads are more peaceful. Even if there's traffic, <laughs> the I'm loving it so yes. much. Yeah. See, yeah. elite speaking. Yeah. Elite yeah. 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 people, yeah. elite. Yeah. Elite But I'm not afraid of elite because I know I'm not elite. I'm a human of the people. You see. Well, you will know when you are exposing your elite tendencies. That would really deposited a lot of hardship on the average Nigerian. You know, this morning when I came in, I was interacting with um, one of the ladies, and she was just discussing, talking about the hardship of getting to the office on a daily basis. I mean, on on Monday, it's you know, Nigerians or Lagosians really felt the effects fully on Monday. People, my colleagues, were getting home at past 11 p.m. and leaving the leaving the houses as early as 5 a.m. just to beat yeah, to time. Me. And yeah. the traffic. So this is the consequence of yeah. of, the, of the of the alternative. Mm. I mean, so. I really don't see how this is going to make Lagos better, or this is how to. Yeah. Going I mean, to I make know I, I, Lagos we don't tell stories on so. both sides, but I know someone who was gunpoint, somebody on an account, monitoring her in traffic, circling her. Finally, she had a gunpoint, give me your bag. And she's just petrified. She doesn't know how she managed. She had seen them circling, so she took her passport and whatever under her seat. And that's how she escaped. They're taking her passport and travel allowance. Mm. The fact they can do it at 1.30 in the afternoon on a jack stretch tells you that. Hmm. 
you're dealing with something. Hawkers on this tra traffic, you will go drive rob also. Yeah, no, but this one can get away rob, because there are motorbikes. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this guy has a motorbike, so he's able you to know? make a fast exit with your yeah. bike. It's not quite the same. Well, Ekene, you've had your go, so now it's my turn. So after the break, I'll be looking at again at the Keke and Okada pandemonium from a different angle. <laughs> It should come as no surprise to us how interconnected our lives all are. Some issues merely flag it up that much more. So I'll be discussing the mega city confusion, part one, and that's Keke Exit. This is the first in a series aimed at examining the growth of Lagos as a mega city. I wondered for quite a bit what had happened to the buses and boats that were the legacy of former governor Ambody. I know he was being hounded for apparently over invoicing the state for the buses. Then I heard some of those people gleefully reporting that their government had arranged a revolutionary overhaul of water transport with those same boats that had been presented to us at a lecture by the managing director of LASWA, a lecture I personally organized in 2018. Now this was part of the reason this government felt that it was okay now to ban Okada and Keke without adequate notice or preparation. So am I expected to take a boat from Falamo to Abalende or what, especially at peak travel time? They say that Okada trade is not long-term, tailoring and brick lane are. They say deaths and injuries from Okada and Keke outnumber all else, be they untrained Okada or those owned by corporate transporters. This is patently untrue and inaccurate. The corporate transporters collectively have a fantastic record. They say that terrorists and criminals use these means of transport more so than any other. And they say a modern mega city should not have these contraptions around. What hoppycock. There's far more crime on the internet and WhatsApp. When will those be banned? How many car drivers in Lagos are suitably licensed? How many Lagosians know who has the right of way at a roundabout? How much is spent on car repairs from collisions with others? Remember that car body parts are imported and a drain on our economy. How many last mile patrol cars are in good body shape? None. These are the enforcing officers, by the way. How many car drivers have killed and maimed Okada riders? How many government bus drivers have caused harm to others on the road? Lagos has character, good or bad, but one nonetheless. Any growth study must absorb and abstract those qualities to make our own authentic city. Keke, Okada are not the problem. It is their regulation, that is. That puts the blame on the Ministry of Transportation and the governor, Sonwolu. They are failing and clutching at straws. The mega city concept is greatly misunderstood. Quit talking about Dubai. This is Lagos, Nigeria. I shall continue next week. I like mm. your, I like your, it's reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, let's pace ourselves on this one. You see, um, I, I also will continue with you next week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because this morning, coming to the island, I look at the number of vehicles all coming to the island today alone, and then I look at the number of people in these vehicles, and I tell myself, why is it that nobody's thinking? Everybody comes to Lagos Island, Victoria Island, Ikoyi daily. In the evening, these places are empty. They all go back. Why are we not thinking of creating mass housing for low-income earners around these places that will be affordable? Yeah. With that also, mm. you take away a lot of cars that would have to drive in. Mm. And then you can now make... VI zone one and say, look, you conjecture, charge these places. Mm -hmm. But no, we won't. Uh, Fashola wanted to build a library. Ambody said, no, you can't build low cost housing, uh, you know, uh, close to the waterways. It's only for expensive and uh, high earning people. You know, all of these are ways to solve yeah. a mega yeah. city yeah. problem. And, and so, with that, you don't need to drive from Alakuko, Alakbado, um, uh, whatever. How also? We've been discussing Fort Milan Bridge. In 2003, Tinubu said we should imagine Fort Milan Bridge between Badore and uh, Ikorodu. Do you know that if you are traveling from Ikorodu to Victoria Island or to Aja, you will have to still come all the way to Todd Milan Bridge? 
Meanwhile, you can stand in a corridor and you're seeing and Badore right Badore in front Badore, of you. Yeah. These are ways you build mega cities. Mm -hmm. But like I say, because there is a lapse and there are no jobs, and then you also see Keke giving as a youth empowerment. That's what they called it. Yeah. Okada giving as youth empowerment. And, and so you encourage these things. And so people hop onto the next available means of transportation. I mean, yes, I mean, in as much as we want to blame our government, we also need to take some responsibility. Because if you look at some of the newspaper uh, clips from a year ago, just as little as a year ago, the same people who are lambasting government were lambasting them a year ago. You just go and check it out. And they're like, you don't care about us, that's why you're not enforcing this ban and you're letting people terrorize us. And now again, they say, you don't care about us, that's why you're taking away our... So we need to get our, okay. our head fixed okay. on. And I'm coming now. So I'm basically saying that we also need to send the signal to them. I like the way Libros mm -hmm. is thinking outside the box. Uh, and that, because I had said to myself, why would anybody spend most of their stressful time commuting if they can find somewhere here to rent for a weekly, so, do your job, and then you go so, away on so, the weekend. So the thing is this. I think it just goes back to a lack of planning. And so we end up creating an environment of insecurity where people take advantages and yeah, opportun opportunistic yeah. um, uh, uh, factors arise. Mm -hmm. Look, since 2008, correct me if I'm wrong, we've been trying to build light rail. Yes. Ethiopia built theirs in two years. Yeah. It's been... Well, how many years now yeah. going on? How many years? We cannot even build a railway line. No, nine, years. Nine, China, China nine years. Nine years to link between mile two to Lagos Island. Marina, yeah. So, I mean, um, we see the population. We build the roads. We see the population movement. We're not doing... Uh, so when people Let's say mega city, roads. mega city, and that's why I agree with you. There is no mega thinking. Yes, that matches the mega On the other yeah. hand, to match yeah. the mega city. It is mega thinking that can use yeah. mega So the, you, you just mount it. Oh, we're going to do Lagos is a mega city. Meanwhile, you have. No, but then to, to, to be There's sympathetic no, to those that I can sympathize with no, you. Let me give you some you, information. We pay taxes, we're the, here. The former, what am I sympathizing with you? Of transportation. His own, and I think I've said this before, let me just repeat it though. He says that, look, it's, it's almost impossible with the funding they have. And as long as people keep coming into Lagos, which you can't stop to match the demands of a mega city. He you know said that when he, went to Dubai to, every day. Me, when he went to London, he found that his number two equivalent was able to get every, any, any amount they put down. Um, the, the system would match it by 40%. Here, the, the federal the government are ignoring thinking, Lagos, whereas Lagos thinking, is the match it. Shebi, we said, let's go to Lagos, we we'll go so that we'll have federal and Lagos will... We'll, yeah, we'll exactly. Go. Is it happening? There's no thinking. The problem is thinking. You can think out solutions. People are coming. You, you also say that um, Lagos is a port city, so people are coming. What about the federal government saying, let's create more ports in other places, let's right. push them so that population will go to those places. Yeah. So you, to you. You, if you focus only on Lagos, yeah. people will come well, you know here because the that opportunities are, are here. The that it's that simple. As I speak to yeah. you, yeah. it's some some simple. Like this will like be that. my topic next week. As I speak to like you, I go to a papa every week. I can't drive to a papa. I take a ferry to a papa, and then I'll have to take a bike where I'm going to no, because can't I can't get a anymore. bus yeah, to, that yeah, to that place. Yeah. Now I will have to trek from uh, what do you call it, Flour Mill, yeah. all the way to Warehouse Road. Yeah. And then that's your, uh, what do you call it, Port Hub. That's the seaway into Nigeria. Right. Yes. Yeah. You have two major ports in Apapa yeah. and it is not accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to think Yes. Not even right. inside the box but now. Are we talking as if we don't know yes. that there are people frustrating even those who want to think? Sorry, Sandra, you must say something. Well, really, I, I think we have all said everything I would, I would have loved to say because, um, I mean, looking at mega cities, talking about um, Dubai is far reaching, even. Who is talking about Dubai? Unless, I mean, he's closely. <laughs> yes. He mentioned yes. Dubai. What is somebody? So, yeah. talking no, about Dubai is yeah. far reaching. Yeah. Oh. Look at Abuja, which is closest to us. Yeah. Let's look at the policies that have been put in place in Abuja and then, you know, match it down to Lagos. Yes. Are we really ready for this kind of no, move? We're not. It's just we don't even want to be ready. We don't we want, want to deal with consequences of our failures. So how do we get ready? Places. Because That's we, what we're we, doing. What are we advocating The way for? we can get ready, mm -hmm. I already said it. Simple. Think don't, simple. No, no. The thinking, let's do the thinking for mm -hmm. them. Yes. Yes. Would they listen to us in, if we donate the thinking for them? In Oniru, yeah. in Oniru, for example, we are building a, what do you call it, a, uh, a co-Atlantic city. Mm -hmm. okay. Take Oniru, for example. Do you know in one acre of land, you can build conveniently 10, 25-story buildings, mm -hmm. low costs. Mm -hmm. And do you know the number of cars mm -hmm. 
you would have taken off the road that walking ah, no, VI. Small, mm. even me, I in that place. Yeah. You go to, even in Victoria Island, there are some areas you can still replicate these same yeah, housing. Please, help them when you do, plan this. When you no, do no, all no, of no. this, you also take away the pressure from your roads. Yes, yes. of course. By solving it, housing problems, people yes. won't be complaining that how do I get to work? So when you are doing all of this planning, you also plan the routes, yeah. buses. So the light rail, Dubai, they don't, they barely have underground train. But they all build their tra train on surface. And, and if you know yes. the number of visitors, they attend daily. Yeah. Look, this is not. So that's why you say numbers of people numbers. coming. I'm like, yeah, what numbers? Yes. What numbers? Yeah, you're exactly. selling what houses numbers? as if you are selling two bars of yam. Yeah, uh, and then you expect uh, to solve problems. How many millions of people go to Paris on a daily basis? I wonder. So what numbers? Or London. People mention yeah. numbers as if it's yeah, it's something. What's an numbers? excuse? Uh, we're, we're not able to match the numbers with resources yeah. and oh. infrastructure. That's oh. the challenge for us. We don't want to. We're not, we're not in a position to do it as, as we, we are today. That's the challenge. Well, we are. We are. Well, well, problem solving okay. is often about fresh perspectives. We trust you've taken away more than a few angles from which to consider the many issues that demand our attention. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Now, to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So until next week, when we'll be serving up a fresh buffet of topics, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.